This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at creating RAID volumes with Disk Utility. So I'm going to bring up Disk Utility. In Disk Utility, we see we have our two external USB flash type devices. I'm going to use those as my hard drives for creating the RAID. I'm going to start by highlighting one of the two, clicking on the RAID tab, giving the RAID set a name, and I'm going to start off by demonstrating the mirroring type RAID. I'm going to click the plus sign down here, and then I drag in the slices that I want to be a part of this mirror RAID. Slices is another name for partitions. Now watch what happens when I put the second member in. We now get a RAID set estimated size of 3.71 gigabytes. And this is because there is a 4 gigabyte and an 8 gigabyte drive and it can only RAID up to 4 gigabytes at most plus there's a little bit of overhead. So I'm going to go ahead and start the creation of this after I choose to automatically rebuild the RAID mirror sets. That's a good safety measure. And we are going to create it. Creating RAID sets will be a destructive process. It will destroy any data on these drives. I don't happen to have anything on them, so it's not that big a deal for me. Just be careful if you decide to create a RAID set to copy off and make a backup of all your data on both of the partitions first. While this is creating, it will take about three, maybe four minutes. Let me explain something about the sizing of RAIDs and the different type of RAID systems. We're creating a mirror RAID, which means that it's going to be the minimum size of both the partitions minus the overhead. So even if we had two four gigabyte partitions, we would still only get an effective disk space at the end of four gigabytes. This is because a mirror RAID is redundant. The whole purpose of it is to provide a redundancy so that if one drive fails, the other one still has a good copy of the data and can still function. There's a different type of RAID called a striping RAID. With this one, we still have the problem of minimizing the partition sizes, but we end up doubling our amount of storage at the end. Lastly, we have a concatenation type of RAID where we just add all the parts together and there can be more than two. Note that with all three RAID types, we lose a little bit of disk space to some overhead for managing the RAID set. So it looks like disk utility is completed. Here we have our description of our RAID set. It's got a green online status. Note that the sizes of the partitions are listed here and that our total mirror size is 3.71 gigabytes. We can copy a file in just like that and it works just like a single hard drive. It's just redundant should one of them fail. I went ahead and ejected it. We're going to now destroy the RAID set. So I highlight the RAID set and I click on delete. This warns us that we're going to be changing our partitioning and that we will have two different partitions named the same thing, each with a copy of the original data. And you see that's exactly what we have now. We have one mirror set with the RAID sizes RTF and another mirror set with the RAID sizes RTF. Okay, so those drives have been ejected now. That's how you can set up a RAID set fairly quickly and easily. It will take a little bit longer, of course, with physical hard drives that are a little bit larger. RAID sets are very versatile. And in the next lesson, we're going to see how you manage them and fix them should they fail.